How do you like your boiled eggs? I personally am not too keen of soft boiled ones. Hard boiled ones are also not that great. Medium boiled ones are the best. In today's video we will try to boil the egg just the way I like it with the help of Arduino Nano and using Millie's functionality. I call such project fusion projects as they are using skills you can acquire watching my other videos. In this case, those videos are on Millis functionality, interrupts and using OLED displays. Let's get to it! Let's go through this project's objectives. We would need OLED display, two push buttons and a buzzer connected to Arduino Nano. At the start, there is no time set to count down from so the display shows 0 minutes. Each time we press the first button, 1 minute is added to that time. When the right amount of time is selected, with the press of the second button, the countdown is started. When we go all the way back to 0, the buzzer should go off together with the ringing bell animation on the OLED display. When the second button is pressed while the alarm is on, the buzzer goes off and the OLED screen again displays 0 minutes and we are ready to set up a new time to count down from. Let's discuss connectivity. As always we are connecting 5 volts and ground Arduino pins to ground and 5 volt sections of the breadboard. Then we connect 5 volt to left pins of both push buttons. The other pin of the first push button goes to digital pin 2 and via pull up resistor to ground. Same for the second push button, it goes to digital pin 3 and via pull-up resistor to ground. Then the buzzer is connected to pin 12. And all the display is connected according to this specification. Let's connect the real thing. Before we start to write egg timer sketch, we need few declarations. We need to attach two libraries for SPI communication and other two libraries to help us with controlling OLED display. Then we declare OLED display dimensions, buzzer pin and all five OLED display pins. And finally, declaring the OLED display itself. To do a quick test if the connectivity is correct, let's prepare the ringing bell animation which we will later use in our code. I prepared 4 frames that make up ringing bell animation. We would use the online tool to generate Arduino code to display those bitmaps on OLED display. I will use this checkbox to invert the bitmaps. The generated code can be copy pasted into our sketch. Let's create a quick test to show animation on the OLED display. With each frame we clear the display and display the corresponding bitmap and when done wait for a specific amount of time in between the frames. The sketch is loaded into the Arduino board. Animation looks great. Now that we have a process of creating the animated bell out of the way, we can start writing the code. We'll start with setting up the time on the egg timer. 
First, we need to have few variables. Minutes would hold the number of minutes we would be counting down from. Timestamp button pressed variable is the variable I use to prevent single press of the button being recognized as multiple press of the button. I will explain the specific use of this variable later on. The last but not the least is the state variable. When it is equal zero, that means that we are in a time setup mode. When it changes to one, it means that we are in a countdown mode. When we count down to zero and the alarm goes off, the state variable is also equal to one. In the setup function, we define the interrupt on digital pin two linked to the first push button. Each time this button is pressed, function press a button will be executed. We save the outcome of Millie's function to timestamp button pressed variable. In the press a button function, first we perform the check if 200 milliseconds passed since the button was pressed the last time. The code will only be executed if that condition is fulfilled. If it is, we just increase minutes variable by one minute and update timestamp button press variable with current value of millis. In the loop function, we have a section of code executed if the state variable is zero. That means we are still in the time setup mode. Here, we make sure the low signal is sent to the buzzer pin so the alarm is off and then we set up the font size, font color and cursor position to output updated value of minutes variable on OLED display. The result would look more or less like this. Now let's trace the process of going from setup mode through countdown mode up to triggering the alarm. In this example, we set up two minutes to count down from. Two minutes is 120,000 milliseconds. On the timeline, we mark the beginning of Arduino sketch. When the second button is pressed, we record the start of the countdown into countdown start variable. We do it by running millis function, which will give us the time since the sketch was started to the time the button was pressed. We will mark it as x milliseconds. In the main loop, we run millis function and deduct value of countdown start variable from it. If result is below 120,000 milliseconds, that means that we are not reached zero yet. If finally the result is equal or greater than 120,000 milliseconds, that means that we have counted down to zero, and when this happens, we trigger the alarm. Now let's look at the code to achieve this. Here is the countdown start variable. In setup, we declare second interrupt linked to pin 3 and the second push button. Here we are also using timestamp button pressed variable to prevent single press of the button being recognized as multiple presses of the button. In press B function, we check the state variable. If it is zero, meaning we were in a setup mode when the second button was pressed, we record the timestamp when the countdown was started and change the state variable to one. If the state was one, meaning we are either counting down or already sounding the alarm, we change the state back to zero and also set minutes back to zero, so we end up in the initial state with zero minutes displayed on OLED display and ready to set up a new time to count down from. One more variable introduced to keep the index of the current animation frame that we want to display. In main loop, we have a block of code that is executed when the state is equal to one. There, we run millis function, and if we have not yet counted down to zero, we display the time remaining. We operate in milliseconds, so to display that time in minutes and seconds, I wrote a time left function. It extracts number of minutes and seconds left and builds and returns the string which is ready to be sent to OLED display. If this countdown was completed, we execute ring bell function which displays the current frame of the animation. Also for frames 1, 2 and 3 it sends high signal to buzzer pin to sound the alarm and for frame 4 it turns it off. So the signal is not continuous but intermittent. 
When the ring bell function is executed, we increase current frame variable, so in the next execution of main loop, we will display next frame in line. If we reach frame 4, we are resetting current frame back to 1. The code is now ready and loaded, and it is time to put it now through the ultimate test. Let's boil an egg! Now this is a perfectly boiled egg. This egg timer project is not really practical, as nowadays nearly every mobile phone has the, that option. This is just a pretext to show you the late trigger functionality that can be used in all variety of projects. E.g. you have a home alarm system and you've reached the alarm and you have 30 seconds to disable it. Or you have a sprinkling system in your garden and every a uh, section is running for a specified amount of time. And the list goes on and on and on. Hope you liked this video. Now I'm going to finish this tasty egg. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.